Welcome back. Um, if you've watched other videos before this one, you probably already have a good understanding of the basics and fundamentals of actual prototyping. Now, going forward, what I want to discuss is variables. And variable is like a quite technical bit. You kind of want to think like a developer now uh, because you're going to have to store some information in order to manipulate other information or other elements. And as an example, let's say if you would want to make some sort of um, forms of calculations with math, with advanced logic, incremental changes to, let's say, a value, um, even, let's say, passing information from page to page, because as you know, prototypes are usually quite limited. And if you refresh a page, uh, the information gets lost. So variables is exactly what you would use it for. And to be honest, any advanced prototype has to involve some sort of variable information. And in this specific session, I'm going to introduce you to variables. So imagine that it's kind of like a really quick onboarding session for variables and what variable really is and how to use it in Axure, as well as I'm going to show you how to manipulate content across page using variables, meaning we're going to try to, let's say, uh, change something on one page and that change is going to ref be reflected across all of a page of your prototype. So imagine maybe it's a theme switch or something. So you have light and dark theme and you just switch. And then every page is, you know, going forward, going to be affected. So you don't have to re-switch it. And then users are going to feel like they're actually in control. So that's pretty exciting. And just to introduce you to variables, variable is really on a, like a really basic level because you as a designer don't really need to know much about it but imagine it being a virtual container for information um, it could be a string variable meaning you could store a text value in it it could be a number variable so you could store a number value in it it could be boolean variable and you could store a true or false value in it but in action it's quite simple i'm just gonna dem demonstrate really quickly um, if you go into project tab you're going to have an option called global variables. Now, global variables is a variable, basically like a container, as I'd say, which is going to pass the information or a value across pages if you want to change it. So as you can see, we automatically have an onload variable and we can give it a default value if we want to. But I'm just going to add another variable, which is going to be like, uh, let's say, testing one or something like that. I need to just remember the name and then I can can give it a value, let's say true, or I can give a value zero, or I can give a value of, let's say my name, something like that. It doesn't matter what the value is, as long as it's alphanumeric, it also could have some symbols in it. But the point is that this variable is gonna float somewhere virtually, uh, you're never gonna see it, but the information is gonna be stored. And the best bit is about it is that I'm going to show you a specific use case, but that let's say if this value right now is false, right? And I click OK, it's going to be stored virtually in a prototype as a false value. Now we can say something with a prototype. Imagine if you have a button which says um, change background color to black, like a theme switcher, imagine. And we change it to black, but then we go to a next page and the color is still white for, a, for let's say, a background because it didn't transfer. But now if a variable like this, we can say when you click on a button which says dark theme, change this variable value to true. Now once we open a new page, we can recheck and say, is this variable true or false? If it's true, let's make this background black right off when page is loading. If it's false, let's keep it white. So it's simple as that. You would make a switch just using a variable. And I think, you know, it might be a bit confusing right now, um, but just bear with me for a moment. I'm going to show you exactly how we can use it. So let's dive right into it. As you can see, these variables here are, you know, you can add as many as you wish, basically. Um, we have some restrictions. So, you know, 25 characters long is a variable value. But let me just rename really quickly so I remember what our variable is. So let's say background variable. And let's keep it false. Now it's just stored there. To demonstrate exactly what I mean by a theme switch, let's add some background to this page. So let's say it's going to be 
like a dynamic panel like so. It's a gray by default, let's say. I'm gonna create a dynamic panel uh, and I'm gonna add maybe, let's say two states. One state is a default state, so the gray one, and another state is gonna be a green state. So we're gonna have, let's say, two themes, right? Now, keep in mind the variable thing in the background. Uh, just, just remember that we have it stored, so it's not a surprise when I pull it back again. And let me just put it to green. Oh, not that field. Let's fill it with green, like so. Looks really toxic, but that's totally fine. That's our choice to do so. And as you can see, we have this background bit. I'm gonna name it background, as always good to do so. Background theme, let's say. And I'm also gonna copy it in a, our sub page here. So these two are our project, the other two ignore it. Uh, these two are our project pages. And as you can see, I have a dynamic panel on both pages. Now I'm also gonna add a switch. And probably just gonna make it like two single buttons. So let's say maybe it's button one and button two. It could be a drop down as well if you wanna check the value of a drop down item. Um, maybe actually let's make a drop down. It's gonna be easier. Drop list is a drop down. And imagine that this is our field for a theme. Again, uh, take your time if you want to experiment and of course make it prettier, it's totally fine. And I'm gonna give it value of light by default and value of green. So these are our two themes. I'm gonna select the light because that's our default option. And I'm gonna say, um, if new interaction, so let's say on select a change, set visibility is one of them, but I'm just gonna have a new interaction and on selection change is of course put up in action line. So it's, it kind of adapts to your needs. And I'm gonna say change panel state background theme. So what I would want to do is to see um, what value the drop down is. So if you remember our conditional statements, it's pretty easy to do. But I'm just gonna do something like add logic. And if selection option of this, as you can see, it prefills already equals option light. This is perfect condition. Then set our background theme, which we created before to default. No animations needed. And now I just copied the, the actual statement and I'm just gonna say else the case, but I, I'm gonna just toggle it to an if, just so there's no confusion, especially for a beginner, let's say prototypers. So there's two if statements and I'm just gonna edit it. So click on it and let's say just changing to green. And I'm gonna just change the state to green. So as you can see, we created a switch. Now, every time I switch the theme here, the background should change. So let's test it out really quick. Boom, boom. As you can see, I created the theme switch. This is great, right? I mean, it works. Let's say user just switches a theme from light to green and they can just prototype. But if we go to next page, they don't have a switch, but the theme also doesn't stick. So that's where the variables are gonna come in and make it pretty. So I'm, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna copy the same behavior, but I'm gonna select all the items so that everything is tied together. I'm gonna just replace a uh, sub page thing. As you can see, um, it's still not gonna link us through because we're not telling the next page that the variable is, let's say green or it's light or whatever. So what I'm gonna do is I have to assign a value to variable, meaning with every switch of this, I have to tell it that variable now is true or false or whatever. So in this statement where I say, if selected is light, I need to set the variable into light, let's say. So I'm gonna just add another action. And if you scroll down, you're gonna find something called set variable value and uh, you have already defined the background variable. And if you want new one, you can add new one in line. That's totally fine of you. But I'm just gonna use our old one and I'm gonna set value to light, right? 
Now for a green one, I'm just gonna copy it across like so and just drag it underneath there and just select and, and, and tell it to do it green in text, you know? So keep, keep in mind that it has to be case sensitive. So keep uh, you know, the switches easy, the variable values easy to remember and, and so on. So now every time I switch on this page to green or light, it's gonna assign that value. So it's gonna be kept in the memory of a prototype to think simply. Now on the next page, what I wanna do is, let's say when the page loads, I would just wanna check which of the values is selected, which of the values is in the variable stored right now. So what I would do is just add interaction to the canvas. As you can see, nothing is selected. And I say on page load. And what we can do on page load, we just need to say set panel state or something like that. But the most important bit is to add the condition the that icon on the right top corner where I'm going to say if let's say value of variable background variable equals value light. Then we set the panel state of our background theme on this page to default. Simple as that. Meaning if we select that light in previous page, we load this page, it should update. And we can make another statement like so. Again, I'm gonna keep it if instead of else, so it's easier for you to grasp, especially if you're new to conditional statements. But I'm gonna change that value here to green. And then I'm gonna change that background theme uh, dynamic panel value to green as well. And that should work and do a trick. Ideally, I would also want to change, let's say the switch value. So meaning if I select it to green in the previous page, the next page value of the uh, uh, dropdown should also say green. But I leave it up to you to experiment and see how it goes. But let's test it out. Okay, so we have these, I'm gonna open a page view as well so you can see where we're at. We have home variable and sub page. And as you can see, I have that switch. So now the variable potentially is set to green. And if I would go to the next page, the background should be green. Boom, it is. And now if I go back and let's say I set to green, but now to light and I go back to sub page, it's light. So as you can see, it does work. It's amazing. You just need to think of like all the other cases. So let's say if I set this one to green, imagine the user just set theme to green. I go to sub page. It's green background, so the theme carries on across the pages. And you can manipulate anything, absolutely anything, any value, any content bit, any element like that. The only thing is like what I would do, as, as mentioned before, is just to correct this uh, bit. So I would just change value of a selection to, let's say, green. So it's consistent. But as you can see, that's how you use variables on a really basic level. And I hope it makes sense to you. If you have any questions, uh, leave them down below. I'm going to touch variables more and more as we go forward because our sessions are becoming so complex, which is great. I hope it's useful. From your comments on some of the videos, I see it is. I, I see that you find it clear and useful. But if you have any comments, please leave them down below. I really appreciate it as well as give a like, subscribe to this channel and this playlist and I'll see you next time.